past any season with a solution. It's no fun to come home on a beautiful spring day after a cold winter just to find some termite swarmers all over your home. Or maybe to get started on a remodel project only to tear open a wall and find live termites inside eating away at your investment. Hey, I'm Matt with Four Seasons Pest Solutions and today I want to discuss a little bit about certain signs you might find in your home or structure that indicate that you have termites. Now, if you've ever been in a situation similar to what I just mentioned, you're certainly not alone. Millions of Americans face termite infestations and damages every year, and these can cost as much as into the tens of thousands of dollars per occurrence in some situations. In fact, in America alone, around $5 billion each year is spent on termites and related repairs by homeowners alone. So if you've not already become one of these statistics, you're probably well on your way. The question is, will you be on the low end of the costs or on the high end of the costs? And that will depend completely on whether you implement preventative measures or corrective measures after damages have already occurred. So many people don't realize that there is a perfectly good and affordable way to stop damages before they ever occur and actually prevent serious economic loss from termite damages. It's actually very simple, but many people just overlook it, dismiss it, or never even think about it in the first place. And it's called a preventative termite treatment. And every home and wood or wood containing structure should have one to stop termites before they ever get started. So yes, a preventative termite treatment can save you not only the headache and heartache of serious structural damages, but also might save you money in the long run and keep you from potentially being displaced from your home while costly repairs are being made. Now, termite treatments aren't only for people who have termites, but also for people who will have termites. And in Kentucky, guess what? That includes pretty much everyone who owns a home or a structure. Matter of fact, the old saying goes kind of like this. In Kentucky, there's two kinds of homes. Those that have had termites and those that will have termites. But here at Four Seasons, we like to add a third and final part to that old saying, and it goes like this. And those that will have again. Now, why do we say that? Well, because like I previously stated, many people don't think about prevention. And since a termite treatment usually only lasts for approximately 10 years, when that 10 year period is over, many people don't rush out and get an updated treatment. And this puts their home back into position it was only 10 years prior. Defenseless against termites. Any investment as financially large as a building should be protected against its worst enemy before that enemy strikes. And this comes in the form of preventative termite control. And here at Four Seasons, we offer several plans which accomplish just that. But let's not talk about that right now. Instead, let's talk about the signs of a termite infestation. So termites rely on cellulose as a primary food source. And of course, wood is the most readily available and preferred meal. Decaying wood is a natural part of many environments and termites are intelligently designed to capitalize on this. So when decaying wood, dead wood, and wooden structures contain a moisture content of right around 20%, or maybe a little bit more, it's a perfect site for termite activity. Now because of their unique design, termites can somewhat aid in the regulation of moisture content in wood. Now this helps to maximize their foraging options when certain portions of wood might be just below perfect conditions, but close to their preferred moisture content of right around that 20% mark. In short, this is achieved by making use of their mud tubes. And these connect all the way back to the main colony. And that main colony is kept at their preferred level of humidity. Now these mud tubes are actually more than simple travel ways or passageways. They're more like an underground cave system above ground. And these mud tubes allow the travel of damp air from the colony and other sources of moisture all the way to the food source. In some cases, this can allow subterranean termites to live completely above ground in certain materials where moisture levels are adequate and able to be manipulated easily by the colony. For instance, in boats or in marinas sitting on the water. Now, among the signs of termites, there's really only a handful which can easily indicate that a termite infestation is present within a structure. And of course, a, a well-trained eye is going to spot these much easier than just the average person. But the well-trained eye doesn't live in your home every day like you do. So an educated homeowner is less likely to sustain significant termite damage. 
Either he or she will have already implemented a preventative treatment, which is obviously the best case scenario, or at the very least, they'll know the signs of an infestation. And while prevention is always best, if you simply have no budget that allows you to afford a preventative treatment, learning the signs of a termite infestation may be the most affordable and maybe only option for you. The first sign I want to discuss, and, and arguably the most notable sign, is termite swarmers. Now, inside a colony, termites are born with distinctive roles for the various available and necessary casts. Each cast helps to ensure a healthy and successful colony. Now, there are three casts which each termite might be born to perform. The first would be the workers, the second the soldiers, and the third would be the alates or the reproductives. Those born to the alate cast are what we call swarmers, and these are either male or female, and they are the future king and queen of a brand new colony. They range in length from around a quarter inch to a half inch long and are dark brown to black in color with two pair of translucent pale wings of equal size. Furthermore, termite swarmers have one body segment with no pinched waist, and they have straight instead of elbowed antenna. Some colonies may be established for roughly four or more years before the alate cast is necessary or even produced. And colonies must reach a level of maturity and size which allows it to easily expand before the alates even become necessary. In Kentucky, late winter until late spring is referred to as swarm season. During this time, termites send their reproductive alate swarmers out to colonize new territories. When swarms occur indoors, this is a sure sign that you have a termite infestation from a colony which is at least roughly four years old and ready to expand. Guess what this means? It means trouble at the old homestead and more damage is coming. So when a swarm occurs inside the home, both live and dead swarmers are probably going to be seen. And this includes shed wings. Hundreds and even thousands of swarmers might proceed out of the colony right into your home. And this can be an overwhelming situation to come home to, no doubt. However, it's important to note that while this occurs to expand the colony, it also sounds an alarm that termites are present in your structure. If you heed the warning and give us a call to come perform a termite treatment, the event that these termites would have used to expand their colony actually becomes their extinction. Well, that is, if you know what you're looking for. Uneducated homeowners assume that these are ants or gnats and they just spray a little can of insecticide and don't see them again until the next year. And at that time, when they swarm the next year, they remember, hey, I sprayed this and it took care of them last year and they simply repeat the process. But an educated homeowner knows that this occurs once a year generally for each colony. And what they see in their home is likely less than 2% of what is actually present destroying the home. An educated homeowner sees the warning sign and calls in the pros to eliminate the problem. When a swarm occurs inside or in close proximity to the structure on the outside, it's likely too late for prevention. And now it's time to call in the pros here at Four Seasons Pest Solutions. And we'll provide you with all the information you need to make a well-informed decision on treatment plans. The second most common sign that an infestation is present is probably visible termite mud tubes. At the width of around a matchstick to the width of a pencil, small mud tubes are formed by subterranean termites when they are outside the ground. These mud tubes regulate temperatures and humidity levels, allowing the thin-skinned workers to perform their duties above ground as we discussed just a few minutes ago. At the width of around a matchstick to the width of a pencil, small mud tubes are probably the most common size found, but combining multiple tubes together and excavating passageways between them make mud tubes vary in size dramatically. And termite mud tubes can actually become very wide in cases like this. Now the crawl space is the most common place to easily find mud tubes. Unfinished basements might be a close second, but they will become visible through the drywall oftentimes as what appear to be small dirt mounds or dirt lines on the wall. Upon closer investigation, the hole behind the tube will almost always be found. When you find mud tubes inside a structure, some amount of damage has already occurred. Now the quantity and size of the mud tubes can help indicate the severity of the infestation. 
However, whether you have one mud tube or 10,000, a treatment is now likely on your agenda. Another sign to look for is what many unsuspecting victims of termite infestations often refer to as tiny maggots or white ants. And when we receive calls regarding tiny maggots or white ants found in walls or other areas of the home, we usually know right away that the pest we're dealing with is termites. Now maggots might certainly be found inside walls and other indoor areas, but there shouldn't be any noticeable damage where they are. Similarly, the presence of what appear to be white ants is also quite deceptive. Now, there are several species of lighter colored ants, but there's no known species of white ant. If you find any insect in your home which you would refer to as a tiny maggot or a white ant, you likely have termites and have found workers or possibly soldiers, and you need a termite inspection right away. In most cases where live worker termites are found, their damages will be there too. But just in case, it's a good idea to snap a few quick pictures and maybe even a small video clip for the pest professional to view when he or she arrives. And the reason for this is because disturbed termite workers will often quickly move away from the area of disturbance. And this potentially leaves no trace of where they were. And this could make an inspection quite difficult if no mud tubes or damages are present. Now, despite what some people think, out of sight and out of mind doesn't mean no damage. Actually, on the contrary, it probably means even more damage. Termites are sort of like a cancer, and ignoring them doesn't make them go away, and the longer they are left to do what they were created to do, obviously the more damage the structure will sustain, and eventually, if left untreated, termites could even render a structure uninhabitable. Now, that's a worst-case scenario, no doubt, but I've seen a few worst-case scenarios stem from just such an infestation. A sign many people completely miss is swollen or cracked walls and blistering paint. Now this is one of the easiest signs to find in a home that's up for sale. Even when intentionally or unintentionally covered up by plaster and paint, these can be detected by a well-trained eye. Now if the trained eye fails, infrared detection devices and canine termite sniffing dogs can be employed. But never cover up termite damages without first seeking proper treatment. If you're selling a home, not only is this unethical, but in many cases it's quite illegal. Damages caused by subterranean termites can cause door frames, window frames, and other trim to appear to reverse blister, swell, and even pop loose. And this will leave cracks and crevices that otherwise wouldn't be present. This reverse blister might be better described as a concave indention in the wood or wallboard. Now this results from termites eating just below the surface, and many times the only remaining structural component is the paint. So the paint begins to sink inward since there's no surface area to hold it in place. This can occur on walls, ceilings, and floors, or any exposed wood. Now it's not always easy to detect, but in many cases, a trained and skilled inspector can use lighting from a handheld light source to magnify and intensify the irregularities on these surfaces. Now I've personally found termites this way on many occasions. Now if any of these signs appear in your home, don't hesitate. Call a professional pest control company right away. Now, they'll be able to provide you with an inspection and reveal findings and even supply you with pictures at your request, but often we snap pictures either way. Once inspected, if termites are present, we'll be able to provide you with some treatment options. Soft spots in wood are another potential sign of termites, and significant damage to the wood members of a structure can and will occur when active termites are present. So, soft, brittle spots in wood might signify an underlying infestation. Now, generally, this will be noticed on a floor or in a crawl space. And if you find this sign, you may have already begun sustaining significant damage to the structure. A trusted and experienced termite technician will be able to identify whether the soft spots are termite damages or other wood-destroying organism. In some cases, it could simply be water damage. But remember, termites need moisture. So if you have water damage, there's a high probability of a termite infestation as well. Another sure sign that termites are present or have been present is termite galleries in wood. Active feeding termites always leave behind their evidence in wood. Galleries left behind from feeding will be long, slender ridges in the wood. Now this occurs because the termites eat the soft wood and leave behind the hard wood therefore creating a gallery, if you will. These galleries will be connected to the mud tubes, which connect back to the colony. 
And they'll sometimes be totally within the wood and sometimes near the surface requiring partial mud tubing walls on the outside. Now these are more often found when damages are serious or when remodels are in progress, but these can also be found in trim work near the floor, and window sills, and other wood items during a routine inspection. And once the galleries are completed, there's no remaining edible wood which meets the criteria that the termites demand. Now they have to move on and leave these galleries for new feeding grounds. Now this might be the two before wall stud just next in line, or it could be 25 feet down the wall. But once the galleries are abandoned, and occasionally before, carpenter ants or other ants might begin to move into these galleries and excavate them for their own uses. And carpenter ants are actually well known to move into abandoned termite damaged areas and excavate their galleries to repurpose them for their own. And sometimes they'll even fight termites and push them away from a particular area in a house in a hostile takeover. Other ant species are less likely to go into combat with termites, but will certainly capitalize on abandoned termite galleries to set up or extend their own colony. And while most ant infestations don't turn out to be connected to termite activity, the possibility shouldn't be ignored. So finding what you might refer to as dirt falling from the wall or trim or other areas can be as simple as ants disposing of their own refuse like we dispose of ours, or it can be as complicated as ants disposing of old termite refuse. Either way, a termite inspection should be performed and the refuse likewise inspected. If the refuse contains termite parts and termite droppings, the ants have excavated termite galleries and it's likely that termites are present within the structure. Though the presence of carpenter ants and other ants may mean nothing more than a simple ant infestation, if you see them, it's time for a full termite inspection. Just to be sure. Besides the fact that you need a carpenter ant or other treatment, you might actually need a termite treatment as well. So when should you order a termite treatment, you might ask? Well, here at Four Seasons Pest Solutions, we believe every home should be under protection to prevent damage from termites. This is the most wise protection of your investment and, again, against its worst enemy. I know, I know, you're, you're probably thinking that we just want to make a sale. And truthfully, we obviously like sales. But what we do here at Four Seasons is more than just sales. We help people live pest-free lives while maintaining good environmental stewardship and protecting you your family, and your home or structure investments. What we sell is freedom, peace, and confidence. Freedom from pests, peace of mind for you and your family, and confidence in investment protection. But at the end of the day, it's your life. It's your family, and they're your finances. And I trust that you'll make the best decision whether I try to convince you or not. So I'm not here to convince you of anything. I'm simply informing and educating the public. If the education you receive from this video alerts you to a specific pest control need, call your favorite pest control company and get them involved right away. Now, if you didn't have a guy before, you do now. And remember, it's okay to live among pests, but you don't have to live with them. Four Seasons Pest Solutions. Any pest, any season, we're the solution. Have a great day. Any pest, any season, we're the solution.